greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. We're so glad you're here this morning. I know we've got a lot of folks out, um, but we're glad Brother Price is here. Uh, amen. I'm, I'm, one, of the, one of the joys of pastoring is, is you, pastoring is a messy business, isn't it though? And, and so one of, the, one of the reasons I love having Brother Price come, um, I, know, I know preachers who will come and just burn the joint to the ground. And I know there are folks who have gone through the ringer. And, uh, and Brother Price is an encouraging word uh, for this church. Amen. And so I, those, those of you who are, who are going through things, just know that the Lord is with you. Uh, and, and you just say amen in me, Kathy? Okay, well, I appreciate that. Um, amen. I appreciate it. See? Look, if the Catholics are with you, you Pentecostals better, better get with it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, don't. Uh, we have one announcement. There's prayer on the 5th. Isn't that a nice change? It's been a little nutty around here. Um, we... Uh, we're going to give you one more week to sign up for Swappers Day and because it's a little anemic. Um, and so um, if you want to do this, that's great. But if we don't, we won't. Um, so one more week and then we'll, 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 we'll assess the temperature and see whether we want to do uh, the bazaar and the bake sale on Swappers Day. Amen, amen. Thank you for your giving. We appreciate it. You give the box. It's Nicholas today. You should put one in for Brother Price. He's from West Virginia. He'd appreciate a good snake in there. I'd rather be right up his alley. He'd probably grab it and throw it on Kathy, you know. So there you go. Amen. I do appreciate uh, the people of God. Um, it, is, it is the highlight of my week to come to church. And uh, so we're, I'm so glad that, that you are here. Uh, we want Brother Price to come this morning. Uh, he is going to minister to us. If you have a need this morning, if you need the Holy Ghost, if you need deliverance, if you want a deeper walk with Jesus, I believe you can receive all of that this morning. Amen? Amen. I believe that in Jesus' name. Let's welcome Brother Price to this pulpit this morning. Come on, let's give that praise to the Lord this morning, can we? We love you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise, glory, and honor, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Are we mic'd up on that piano over there? I think they could hear me anyways, though, couldn't they? Coming back from where I came from, we do a lot of the, the old songs. And I just want to drive you nuts with that noise. Short walk, huh? Thank you. 
has often times been my testimony. Praise God. Raised in strength and raised in power. The scripture talks about it. Hallelujah. My strength, my hope, my peace of mind, it all comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe it was Paul that wrote, he said that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. It's all through and by Jesus. Amen. Praise God. It's such an honor to be here once again. And I have looked forward to this opportunity for many months. And uh, when I first received contact from your pastor concerning Outpouring Weekend, I was just thrilled to be invited to be back up here one more time. Praise the Lord. I feel the presence of God here today. Amen. It's in a very, very precious, tender way. The touch of Jesus is in this house this morning. And that encourages me because I understand that where he is, anything can happen. Praise God. If you come here needing a miracle today, it can happen. If you come here today needing deliverance, it can happen. If you need the Holy Ghost today, it can happen. Praise God. Uh, All things are possible to them that believe. I want to know if I'm among a house full of believers today. I said, I feel like I am. Am I among some that believe, praise God, that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think? It's according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Praise God. I give honor to your pastor, to the first family of this church, to Sister Ryan. It's such an honor to be here today, to Brother and Sister Mann, to all the ministry of the church. Praise God. We honor you. And to all the saints of God, you're not last on the list. You're just part of the group. Amen. We honor you. We honor you today. And it's such a privilege to be here. If you have your Bibles, we want to without further delay, get into the Word of God. My attention today is in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number 2. That's where we want to direct your attention. Paul would write these words in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians in verse number one he, when he tells us, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. I want to know if anyone in this house this morning can, as the old song says, look back down the road and see just where the Lord has brought you from. Can I get a witness in this place? He goes on to say, he said, we're in time past. We walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also you had our conversation in time past, In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But let's focus in on verse number four. Things kind of change around in our text when we get to verse number four, when we read these words. But God. I'm thankful for every time that I've turned to the word and I've found that little conjunction as part of the sentence. Oh, my, 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 my. I'm thankful for every time that there has been a divine intervention, Brother Ryan. But God, Paul said, who was rich in mercy. I want to know who thanks him for his mercy this morning. Are you thankful for the mercies of God? For his great love wherein he loved us, uh, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. Uh, And then we read uh, that by grace uh, ye are saved. Uh, You know what grace simply defined is? Uh, It's God's righteousness uh, at Christ's expense. Uh, He paid it all and to all to him I owe. Come on. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it uh, 
white as snow. Uh, oh, come on, are you going to preach with me today? Uh, and he hath raised us up together and made us uh, set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, in verse number 8, for by grace, uh, somebody shout by grace, uh, are you saved uh, through faith uh, and not of yourself. It is uh, the gift of God. But where I want to direct our attention this morning, I want to take us back up to where we read in your hearing in verse number 6, uh, where Paul, the writer here of our text, he said uh, that he has made us together to sit rather together in heavenly places. Uh, praise God. And that's what I want to preach about this morning. I want to talk to you about being seated in heavenly places. Seated in heavenly places. Would you look to the Lord in prayer with me? Father, we thank you, God, for what we feel in the house of the Lord this morning. We thank you, God, for the people of God that have come together, God. Lord, in one mind, in one accord, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for the unity that we feel in the Spirit. Uh, and Lord, we know you're going to do great things in this service. Uh, God, we feel you here in a very special way. And God, we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds into your Word, God. Speak to us, God, uh, on a corporate level. But God, to, on an individual level, God, we pray. Uh, we give you praise and glory and honor, for we ask it in the name that is above all names. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Could we just take a moment here and put our hands together and just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We love you and we honor you, Lord Jesus. Brother Ma'am was teasing us back in the office before we came out here into service. And I, I try not to remove my coat, but that kind of means I, I feel at home here. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Praise God. But I've come this morning to preach to you about being seated in heavenly places. Since I first experienced the Lord and came to know Him. I've had an overwhelming desire to know Him in a supernatural way. I have had a desire to entertain things of a heavenly nature, to witness the ministry of angels. Does anybody still believe in angels in this house? To witness the sign of notable miracles. To see the hand of God move in a supernatural way. But what I feel that God has impressed upon my heart to preach to this congregation this morning. Is that God is calling us. God is calling you and I to see the supernatural. God is calling us. I believe that there is a call in this time, in this hour that we live, to where we go back and we read in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter number 9, where Daniel would say that the people of God, the ones that know God, the people that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. I hope you realize this morning that God has called us to do more than to occupy space up on a pew. I said God has called us to be salt and light into a dark and a hopeless world. God has called a people to rise up and be strong in Johnstown, Ohio. He has called a people by his name and he has called us to sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah. I'm telling you this morning that Jeremiah would remind us in chapter 33 in verse number 3 that the uh, those that would call upon his name, he said 
that if you will call upon me, I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Praise God. I don't know about you, but that seems to me that God has set us up. He has set us up. He has positioned us that we might encounter some things of a heavenly nature. I want to tell you today that God has ordained, praise God, that we that set in the position of kings and priests, we have been set up to set in heavenly places. If you're ready to go higher, if you're ready to go higher in God today, I want you to clap your hands to him. I want you to honor him. I want want you to lift him up with a voice and a shout of praise. But what do we mean when we talk about being seated in heavenly places? If we look through uh, several translations, we will understand that to sit in heavenly places could mean that we are literally sitting in heavenly realms. In other translations, we read about the heavenly sphere, the heavenlies as it is referred to. But Paul, the apostle, he goes and in his letter to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and in verse number 2, he tells a story about an encounter that he had in God. When he starts the story out, he says it's something uh, uh, to this nature. He said, I met a man about 14 years ago. And he said, in that encounter, Brother Ryan, he said, of earth I could not tell or of where I could not tell. But then he talks about being caught up into the third heaven. I come today to remind us that if we think that this is the end, that it all ended when we obeyed the gospel, when we repented of our sins, and when we were buried in his name in baptism, when we received the gift of the Holy Ghost, if we feel like that is where it all ended, you are wrong because this same apostle that we are reading from here in our text today he talks about a faith that goes from faith to faith he talks about a glory that goes beyond just glory but it goes glory to glory I'm telling you that what God has impressed upon my heart and upon my spirit for this church today is that God desires to take you into another dimension into another level of the Holy Ghost I'm telling you God is calling the people that you might work exploits that you might see the miraculous hand of God move in Johnstown come on if you're excited about that would you give him a praise in this house this morning Paul he talked about that when he was caught up that he found himself literally in The third heaven. We look at this concept of how the heavens were created. And we understand that the first heaven would be the literal atmosphere. But then we go on and we realize that the second heaven could be referring to outer space. But I want you to know that there is a dimension that goes beyond the cosmos. It goes beyond uh, the spectrum of the universes. Uh, I want you to know that there is a place that the scripture tells us about, uh, hallelujah, that goes into the realm of the presence of God, the eternal presence of God. Uh, Hallelujah. And I don't know about you today, uh, but I want to get caught up into that place. Uh, I want to experience some things uh, of a heavenly nature. Uh, Praise God. I'm telling you today that I would not want to be part of a people. I would not want to be part of a church that did not desire his presence. That did not desire the move of God. That 
did not desire, praise God, the quickening touch of the Holy Ghost. Because I'm reminding you today that David would declare that in his foot, that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there is power forevermore. I'm telling you today that this world is sick and tired of dead dry religion this world is sick and tired of not being able to explain the things that are unseen that's why we have such a strong movement of the occult that's why some of the most recent major pictures that has been released out of Hollywood in the last many years uh, have had a theme uh, with a supernatural condensation uh, because there is an interest uh, in things of the supernatural uh, but yeah, I'm here today to preach to you and I feel the Holy Ghost right now brother Ryan uh, hallelujah that what this world really needs uh, is they need an encounter uh, with Jesus Christ uh, of Nazareth uh, they need an encounter uh, with the blind eye opener uh, they need uh, an encounter with the lame man healer. They need an encounter, praise God, with the God that I met over 25 years ago. That God turned my world upside down. He changed my life. Hallelujah. Are you thankful that he's changed your life? Praise the Lord. But we as the church We can never get complacent in the fact that we are settled in to the place that we will accept some kind of counterfeit move of God. I remember Brother Stone King saying years ago, he said, I was born in the fire and I'll never be settled living in the smoke. Praise God, I'm telling you that we are a people, hallelujah, that have been blood washed. We are a people that are spirit filled. We have the eternal almighty God living inside of our soul, hallelujah. And if you can be quiet about that, praise God, you need to explain to me how you can be quiet. Because I cannot, I can't even wrap my mind around the fact that the eternal God of glory would have mercy enough upon me that he would make a dwelling place inside of my heart that he would take out a a darkened blackened stony heart that was full of sin and wash it in red crimson blood and make it white as snow hallelujah it's beyond what I can understand but I know that he's done it I said I know that he's done it he made a change in my life praise God and I cannot be settled praise God with something less than what God said I can have and I'm going to go for it brother uh, Ryan I'm going to seek for it I'm going to look for God to do things on a greater level than what God has ever done before I'm ready I'm set up today to have my mind blown I said I'm in a position today to say Lord take me higher than I've ever been before take me into a place I've never been before come on hallelujah I'm ready today to experience some things of a heavenly nature aren't you glad today that you're sitting in heavenly places come on could you give God some praise in this house but Paul talks about this new life that you and I have experienced it's here in our text in verses 1 and 2 and he said in you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin wherein Time passed, you walked according to the course of this world. You don't know the testimony that I have. I won't take a whole lot of time to get in depth, but I was raised around a religious order. My dad pastored a church for over 35 years. I was raised around good godly influence. But it took me to, I was 20, almost 21 years of age before I walked into an apostolic Pentecostal church. 
And the first time that I heard the message, the first time I heard repent and be baptized, every, of you, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. I was already a grown man. But by that time in my life, I had experienced things in my life. I had scars. I had wounds. I had been through times in my life that I had dabbled and, and drifted out into the things of the world. And I was in a position that God was the one that was going to have to rescue me. I was telling a little bit of my story to a brother in the church the other night. And I was telling him that uh, during... That time before I came to know the Lord, I was living with my grandmother because of some things that had went on in our household. I had to move out. And I was living with her, and during that time, I started drifting out and exploring the things of the world more so than I'd ever uh, been. I didn't have the courage to do before because I didn't want to break the heart of my dad and my mom. But I remember during this time that I got to a place that I was trying to hide things and I began to tell lies. And one lie was told just to cover up another one. Then it got to the place that one morning I remember that I lied to my grandmother. And I loved her so much I said if it gets to this place that i got to look her right in the face and lie to her. I said I went in a very dark place. It was in this time and you may or may not believe this, but I remember visitations. Now, mind you, I had not experienced Acts 2.38 yet, but something would enter into my room and would hover over my bed, and it would literally try to pull me out of my body. I couldn't under, understand it, but I felt that draw. I felt that pull that something was trying to separate me from the destiny of and the call of God that God had placed upon my life. But I'm thankful that Jesus kept his hand upon me. I'm thankful that Jesus had mercy upon me. That while I was out there chasing all the things that this world would have to offer me. Praise God that God kept his hand upon me. And I feel like I'm among some people this morning that your testimony could be similar to mine. Praise God, God has been good. He has been rich in mercy. Hallelujah. And if we ever get to the place, hallelujah, that we think that we can be settled in our experience and in our relationship with God. Oh, if I could take some of you back to how it was when it first began. When you first experienced uh, the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Uh, when you first experienced uh, uh, the, the power uh, of uh, the regeneration that took place when you called upon the name of the Lord uh, in water baptism. Uh, if just for 30 days, Brother Ryan, uh, we could go back and we could act like we did uh, when it was all brand new. Uh, I'm telling you, this church uh, would not be able, uh, praise God, to handle the move of God. Uh, I'm telling you, we would have uh, uh, running the aisles. We'd have dancing in the spirit uh, because some of us uh, have got to the place that we feel like we're too grown up uh, to do those things any longer. Uh, but Lord, I hear your word this morning inside of me uh, in the word of a song uh, that said, I need a brand new touch. Uh, I need a brand new touch. Uh, I, need, uh, I need a move of the Holy Ghost uh, in my life today. Come on, give God some praise in this house this morning hallelujah hallelujah come on would you lift your hands to the Lord right now oh God I feel your anointing in this place hallelujah God help us this morning saints that we don't let this become old hat to us hallelujah that it doesn't become a ritual that it doesn't become a routine but that we consistently keep reaching for the things of God Jesus will remind us in the gospel blessed is he who hungers and thirsts after righteousness I pray this morning that God increases your spiritual appetite I pray to God this morning that God gives you 
you an unquenchable uh, uh, thirst for the things of his spirit uh, and a passion to go after him uh, into deeper ways and dip, dip, deeper experiences uh, than what you've ever experienced before. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm here to challenge some people uh, that will uh, uh, go on this journey with me uh, to go into these heavenly realms. Uh, praise God to where services uh, are no longer just normal services praise God that we go higher than what we've ever gone before you want to help your pastor out you want him to preach with more fire and more fervency than what he already preaches with I challenge you today rekindle that fire if you want to have a worship service that literally feels as though that we are sitting in the very throne room of God, <laughs> we got to get on fire again. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to experience miracles and supernatural things that you've read about in the scripture, <laughs> We've got to get on fire again. I'm here to tell us that we have been quickened. Praise God, we have been quickened. We were once dead, but we are now alive. We've been quickened to sit in heavenly places. And let me remind you this. If you think that God is coming back only for a bride that is in the ground, you are in a delusional state because the Bible says, is the first thing he will do uh, with that bride that has departed from this life uh, is that he uh, will resurrect that bride. Uh, he is going to speak new life back into that bride again. Uh, but I'm telling you, I believe I'm among a people this morning uh, that knows what that quickening touch is all about. Uh, that you understand that same spirit that dwells in you. Uh, that one glorious day it will quicken your mortal body. Uh, that you will translate from this earth uh, into the promise uh, of the life that is to come praise the Lord we've lived far too long beneath the privileges that God has afforded to us saints we've accepted things far too long that we should not be accepting. And it's time that we as the people of God that we realize just what kind of power lives inside of us. Hallelujah. That as we are a covenant people and as we walk in covenant with God, we have been promised by the word of the Lord that we are not only heirs, but that we are joint heirs with Christ himself. Praise God. And that he has called us to set in these heavenly places that I'm preaching to you about this morning. That God desires that we encounter him in intimate relationship. He desires to open up the mysteries and the knowledge of himself to us. Listen what the psalm declares in Psalms chapter 25 and verse number 14. The word of the Lord says that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. We go back and we do a word study here in the psalm and we find out that the word that is used as fear here in this verse of scripture refers to a fear that means to be afraid to go into higher places. It means to be apprehensive. Praise God. I have met so many people that tell me that they want the things of God, that they want to experience uh, levels uh, in their walk with God that they've never walked in or experienced before. But there's always, it seems to be an apprehension there. And my mind went back and I, when I was working with young people back in uh, my wife's, the, the church that she was raised in, that her grandfather pastored for years uh, uh, 
Crystal and I, we were privileged to work with the youth there for about six years. And we had uh, taken a, a group of young people and we built that young people's group up to um, a real strong uh, for country church, we had about 25 strong in our youth group. Uh, and uh, during this time, I was working with these young people, and we were having fast days, and we were having prayer meetings, and God was moving. I'm telling you, I could tell you about stories that in those youth prayer meetings that uh, young people would be laid out under the presence of God and they would be uh, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I remember one night that Sister Green, one of our uh, young uh, married couples in the church, brother and sister Green, uh, that Sister Green left one of those uh, prayer meetings and drove down the road and got pulled over by the police. Uh, and when they pulled her over, uh, uh, she was still under the influence of the Spirit and she was giggling and, and, and popping and, and cracking. And, and he said, are you okay? And she said, well, you probably wouldn't understand if I told you. But she said, I just came from church. She said, uh, uh, he told me, she said, uh, uh, your tags are dead on the back of your car. And she starts laughing. And uh, he said, uh, what's so funny? She said, I'm sorry. And he said, well, what's so funny? She said, you wouldn't understand. Uh, and uh, he said, well, you, your tags. And she said, I've got them in the glove box. Uh, and he said, well, just give them to me. And he put them on her uh, car for her. Uh, and he said, you need to be careful uh, uh, going home that night. Uh, I'm telling you, those kids experienced something uh, in the presence of God. Uh, and some of them walked away from the Lord. But they'll never forget uh, what they experienced uh, in in those prayer meetings, in those times with God. And I, I remember those things, but one of the young people in the group, she came to me one day and she was telling me she had been fasting and she had been praying and really seeking God. And she said, I began to experience things I've never experienced before. And she said, I, I'm, I'm frightened. I said, well, Kimmy, what are you frightened about? She said, because I see both sides of this thing. She said, I don't always... See the good. I don't always see the angels that are present in the room. She said, sometimes I see the other side. And she got scared. She said, I don't want to see that side. So a little while later, after I was encouraging her and trying to keep her moving forward in the things of God, she began to regress and she began to give up on her prayer life. And I said, Kimmy, I said, I don't understand. I said, what are you afraid of? She said, because I, I, I fear what I see on that other side. Let me tell you something this morning. You don't have to fear anything that the, that the enemy does. He may blow himself up to look big, bad, and ugly, but I'm telling you this morning that he is under your feet. I'm telling every Holy Ghost child of God in this place this morning, you don't have anything to fear. There's no power in hell that is greater than the power of our Jesus. There is no force. Praise God. There is no negative spirit, no demonic influence that is greater than the power of our Jesus. I'm telling you this morning uh, that we need a fresh revelation uh, of he that is in us that is he that is greater uh, than he that is in this world uh, ah come on somebody in this place uh, don't let the enemy deceive you this morning uh, in the fact uh, that you can't go higher in God uh, that you're going to fight more devils uh, I'm telling you even if we have to fight more devils uh, he's going to give us power to overcome uh, come on if you're thankful for that give God some praise in this house. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and I'm hastening on. Listen what Moses would write to the covenant people of God. He says the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Let me, let me read that again. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us, to our children forever, that we may do all the words of His law. The New Testament tells us that He would not withhold any good thing from us. We have been given the privilege and the opportunity to be opened up to know the knowledge and the secrets of God. God wants to share that kind of information with us. 
But listen what the amplified translation of Luke chapter 8 and verse number 10 said. And he said to them, to you it has been given to come progressively to know, to recognize and understand more clearly and strongly the mysteries and secrets of the kingdom of God. But for others, they are parables. They're just simple stories. So that looking they may not see and hearing they may not, un- they may not comprehend. You know who Jesus had his biggest problem with? Religious folks. Religious folks that were so locked in to tradition, that were so locked in to this is the way that we've always done it, that we can't change. We can't change now. God help us as the apostolic church that we get in that kind of mindset that we cannot adapt to what God is doing in the time that God is doing it in. Can I get an amen in this place this morning? Praise God. One last scripture. It comes out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verses 9 through 12. Paul would write these verses. He said, but as it is written, I have not seen, neither nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, For what man knoweth the things of God, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now he that receiveth not the spirit of of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that he might know the things that are freely given to us of God. God has things for this church to experience even here this morning. That we merely just touched the surface. There is so much possibility in this place today. There's possibility for miracles. There's possibility for uh, the workings of the Spirit. There's a possibility, absolutely, that's faith. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, we take that last verse of Scripture that I've read and we equate that to what? lays beyond in glory but could it be that Paul was trying to wrap our our mind around the concept that in the natural that we cannot understand we cannot comprehend eye hath not seen ear has not heard neither has it entered into our hearts what God has prepared for us I believe that could be something for right now brother Ryan we may not be able to comprehend it but God wants to give it to us And as we get ready and we stand to our feet across this congregation this morning, I want us to get our hearts centered upon the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And as we get prepared this morning, I want to know today that if I'm among anybody that desires something deeper, something more intimate in your walk with God. I want to know if there's some souls in this house today that you desire to know God. If you're in this place and you've never experienced the infilling of His Spirit, this is what today has been dedicated to. It is the outpouring weekend for the Ohio District of the United Pentecostal Church. God has set things up for this day that you might be able to receive from Him. Praise God, there's not one thing that you've done that would disqualify you from the grace and the mercy of Jesus. If you'll come to this altar when I make the altar call in just a moment and you'll open your heart and repent of your sins, you are a candidate to receive the promise of God. You are a candidate to receive that promised blessing that came from on high. You are a candidate, praise God, to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with new tongues. I've experienced some miracles here lately in our travels, and I've been telling this one in places, and I won't keep you standing long, but a few weeks ago, we were in a small missions church in the Clarksburg area, 
And there was a man that responded to the altar call that morning. I didn't know anything about his conditions. I didn't know anything about anybody in that church. But when he responded to the altar call that morning, he came on the side that was there for healing. And we were praying for folks and people were being touched by God. And I look over and I see this man on his, on his hands and then on his knees. And he was dragging himself across the floor to get prayer. And as I walked over to where he was, Brother Ryan, my mind and my eyes were focused in on him. And I reached down and simply touched him on his back. And when I touched him on his back, the Spirit of God quickened my soul and said that he's got a spirit of infirmity that has attached itself to him. And when my, my hand touched his back, he began to dry heave and he began to cough and act as though that he had a devil in him. And uh, I took authority over that spirit and commanded it to go. And that man jumped to his feet, and when he jumped to his feet, he began to run around that church, and he was celebrating the presence of God, declaring his deliverance. Still in the dark, I didn't know what was going on, and afterwards I was told that this man had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He came into the church. Oftentimes, he couldn't even walk. He would have to walk with the assistance of a walker or somebody else holding him up. But this guy's running around the church, acting like the guy that we read about in the book of Acts in chapter number 3. Then I found out he had lost his grip and he couldn't even give a good firm handshake anymore. God restored his grip. A, a few weeks later, I was at our district men's conference and I saw Brother Delaney there in that men's conference you know what Brother Ryan he's still healed a few weeks later we were in our district camp meeting and there's Brother Delaney guess what he's still healed praise God I'm not preaching to you about things that happened uh, uh, back years ago or just in Bible times, I'm telling you uh, that for God's people, uh, we can experience this stuff today. Uh, I said God has miracles uh, that are resting above us. Uh, and all we got to do is just open up and let God do what God does best. And He can move uh, and maneuver through things in our lives uh, that may, may seem complicated. Uh, and He can elevate us into places uh, that are in uh, the heavenly realm. He can take us up. Uh, and, and allow us to sit in heavenly places uh, in Him. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to ask Sister Ryan if she'll begin to play. And I'm going to open this altar up today. I want to open this altar up today. If you're here and you've never experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you desire it. You desire the infilling of the presence of God. To have the Bible evidence to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost as they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. If you've never experienced that or you desire today for renewal in that experience, I want you to stand to the right side of this platform. It may be some of your left. Your left. If you're here today and you need God to do something for you, or you just got a strong spiritual hunger that you need God to touch that hunger inside of you and to help you to go into deeper, deeper places with Him. I want you to just to step out of your seat to, and walk down into this altar. Hallelujah. Please stand. Don't kneel. Don't kneel. If you're here and you need the Holy Ghost, this is your time. Praise God. I don't know who needs the Holy Ghost here and who don't need the Holy Ghost, but God does. And if you're here and you need the Holy Ghost, I would not leave this place today even if I didn't make an opportunity to come into this altar. Lord, as we get ready, God, to receive from you, God, we open our hearts right now, God, and we pray, God, Lord, that you would just search us. And Lord, if there's anything that is inside of us that is indifferent, that is wrong, God, that is 
sinful, God, Lord, we ask you, God, right now, God, that you will help us, God, that you will forgive us, God, of that, that shortcoming, that, that sin, God, that can so easily beset us. God, Lord, we pray, God, today, God, that you would just help us, uh, that you would just wipe that clean, God, that we can receive what you have for us uh, in this house today. Lord God, we are about ready, God, to pray over this congregation because we feel the gift of faith activated in this house right now. And upon the authority of your word and in the power that resides in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release by the gift of faith upon this congregation today, God, a higher dimension of their faith. I release by the gift of faith upon this congregation today, a fresh renewal and a fresh infilling of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, would you lift your voice and begin to worship the Lord around this house right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ
you're in this house today and you have a need for healing in your body, we saw God do a work here already. But there's probably some that need healing in their body. I want to take an opportunity to minister to you today. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands around this house and just worship the Lord? Going up to the high places. Going up to the high places. Going up to the high places. Tear the devil's kingdom down. We're going up, going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. Gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. Oh, let's go up, going up to the high places. Going up to the high places. Going up. 
to the high places, gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. If you're able to stand with us, uh, we're going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. Going up to the high places, gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. Oh, let's go up, going up to the high places. Come on, going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places, gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. Let's go up, going up to the high places. We're going up to the high places. Going up to the high places. Gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. Come on, can we give the Lord a praise across this house? Come on, just praise Him for about 30 seconds and lift your voice up behind that praise. Come on, thank Him for healing and thank Him for deliverance and thank Him for the infilling of the Holy Ghost that took place in this house today. Uh, come on, this has been outpouring. This is outpouring. Uh, this is outpouring. Uh, come on, you got about 10 seconds left in you. Come on, just amp up the praise in this house uh, and put your voice behind it. We love you, Jesus. Uh, we magnify you, great and mighty God. Brother, I want to ask a question before I turn this back over to Pastor. You hear yourself speaking a heavenly language today? You keep on seeking God, okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. Pastor, if you would. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise again. Amen. Amen. Now, hear, hear this now. Uh, when I was sitting back there, uh, the Lord told me two things. He said, I'm about to do miraculous works among you. He said, an adversary of your soul will attempt to discount it the moment you walk out the door. The minute you get in your car, the devil's going to go, you were just emotional. You just wound up. You just, you know, you're back in the real world now. Don't listen to that voice. God has, or what do we say in Ephesians 3 and 20? Unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And then what's the last part of that? According to the power that worketh within us. Don't let the enemy discount what God's done today. Don't listen to the voice that says you're just emotional, you're just excited. Every, everything's going to go back to the way it was. God forbid that the Holy Ghost come and give us a visitation the way it did today, and then we go back and just discount and go back and do things. I, I did not come here, the mans did not come here to plan a church to do things the way we did. We came here to take spiritual authority over things and to have a harvest in the name of Jesus. Do you believe that today? Amen. I believe it. I believe God's going to give us a harvest here in Johnstown. Amen. Amen. I believe it. Amen. Thank you, Brother Price, for the Word of God. Amen. I appreciate that. My faith is bolstered this morning. The Lord wants to take us a little deeper. Um, I was talking with Rocky, and he said, the Lord just opened some things up to me that maybe need to come out of my life. I said, that's because the Lord wants to take you deeper. Here's the thing. When the Lord takes something out, he always replace it with something better. The Lord is not going to take things away and leave you destitute. He'll take things out of your life and he'll go, let me give you something better. Let me walk a little higher. Let me go a little deeper. I mean, you had, you had good preaching day. You don't even hear me preach again. But, but well, thank you, sir. And uh, so I, I appreciate the spirit we feel now. I watched, I watched Dominic come pray with his dad. I was about ready to jump out of my skin. I was so excited. Um, Dom, Dominic and Erica, we love you. I told I told. I told uh, uh, I told Dominic, I said, your dad's my prayer through her. He's the guy when I, you know, I need, to, you know, you need to get somebody across the finish line. That's, that's why Rocky is here in this church, right? That's why we sit him right up front, right? Appreciate. And that's right. And you need the Holy Ghost, Kathy. Amen. Thank God. 
Uh, you know, here's what blesses me as a church plan, right? We've been doing this for eight and a half years. And I'm sitting three rows back and I'm watching Kathy just ready to pop out of her skin in faith for what God's going to do. Those of us who grew up in this need to pay attention, right? I'm like, don't, don't let Kathy out worship me, right? I'm, they, you, know, you know, you NASCAR junkies, right? Kathy is our pace car, right? You got to keep up with her. I'd suggest you eat breakfast before you come in because I, appreci- I appreciate good worship, Kathy. I'm not, I appreciate the faith that you generate in this, in this house because that's contagious, There you go. There you go. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. There you go. Amen. We believe it. I'm tired. There you go. Okay. Pray for Lacey's uncle Brett. He's he's been going through it for a while. Amen. We do. Amen. All right. Well, they said it. I'm going to have you come preach, Kathy. So there you go. Amen. Do you feel good in your spirit? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. That will be the, the best hour, hour and a half in your, in your week is when you come to church. Amen. Thank you, Brother Price, for the word of God, for building our faith today. Amen. I, I love coming to you know, and now you need a nap, right? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, next next week, uh, two services next week, Sunday school and, and worship and word. Man, have a great week. Remember what you feel. Invite someone to church next week. And don't believe the voice of the devil. Don't believe the voice of your adversary. There you go. Boy, she's going to just knock him upside the head. She's just ready to knock his lights out. I'm a little nervous, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little scared right now. Oh, that's all right. Amen? God's good. All the time and all the time, God is good. We will see you next week. I love every one of you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. I'll, I'll see you next week. God bless you.